In the same region, shepherds were biting their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. This will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped snugly in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts and the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angel had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as they had been told. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful message. Keep it vivid in our hearts and in our minds, this day and always. In Christ's holy name, amen. I like looking at nativity sets, don't you? Now, there's all kinds of them out there. There's, there's plastic ones and crystal ones and pottery and cornstalk ones. All different kinds. Nativity sets dot the town squares and the tiny villages. They adorn special places in our homes. The scene is a beloved one to us, and we study each of the figurines and what they mean for us. You know, three people make up the focal point, Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus. Also present are the shepherds, the animals, and the ever-popular wise men with their camels. All of these things bring a smile and open the floodgates of memories that we have about Christmas. But what about the angels? We enjoy seeing them as part of the nativity, but we often have a hard time as to where to put the angels. We know that they kind of belong in the air. Shouldn't they be hovering overhead? We tend to put angels on the periphery of the scene. There she is. (laughs) Almost at a distance. But where do they belong? The Bible would argue the point and place them right in the middle of the action. What is the role of angels In this great event, angels are a bit of a mystery. When we think of angels, we envision them wearing robes and having huge feathery wings. A throwback, I'm I'm thinking, to the Middle Ages and to the Renaissance. Fact is, artists were left to their own imaginations when it came to the, the angelic host. And the Bible says that it gives, gives little or no, no kind of description about angels. This is what we know about angels and their appearance. If we saw one, most likely we would be terrified. The reason I say this is due to what the angels say when they appear to us. Don't be afraid. People in the Bible weren't used to seeing angels. But the birth of Christ brought with it an increased activity by the angelic host. 
Zechariah, the father of John, he saw an angel. Mary, the mother of Jesus, she saw an angel. Joseph, the father of Jesus, saw an angel on more than one occasion. The shepherds saw angels. And don't forget the wise men in a dream were warned to stay away from Herod. Then perhaps maybe it was even an angel that was involved there. Who can explain the work of angels? The Bible has them coming in dreams and in real time. They appear as fearsome beings or as ordinary people. Hebrews 13 and 2 tells us that showing hospital, in showing hospitality, many have entertained angels without ever being aware of it. What is, in, what is important about the work of angels is that they are about doing the work of God. They, are almost, they also minister to, G, to Jesus in the wilderness and in the garden. They help Paul escape from prison. Angels took Zechariah's speech from him because he doubted. Gabriel visited Mary. He was one of two angels that we know by name. In the Bible, the other one is Michael, the archangel. Joseph had several visits from angels and dreams. Ever wonder why angels? I think it's because we would be more likely to follow the, the advice of something spectacular than just the ordinary. And then we have the shepherds. Last week I spoke about how they were the lowliest of the low. God had moved to make the shepherds part of the Christmas story by having the angels visit them. What does that say about God? God sent angels to Mary and to Joseph as part of his eternal plan. But, but what about the shepherds? Well, I can only conclude from that that God is full of surprises. Surprises. 